Rowan. Follow me. Rowan. Sorry? What did you say? What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. And we've got a big debate. Music while you're studying or no music? What do you currently do? I'd love to hear, leave it in the comments below. In this video though, what I'm gonna be sharing with you is what we found in the research uh, on whether or not you should be listening to music while you study. And my hope is that it'll help you get better clarity on whether or not music is helping or hindering the effectiveness of your study. So what's the case for music? There's a couple of reasons why listening to music could help. And, and the first is, it can actually drown out background noise. So if you've got variable background noise, right, noise that's coming and going and changing, um, that can actually be very distracting. So having music, which is a consistent background noise, could be an effective way to drown out the noise around you to help you get focused. So if you're studying in an environment where there's lots of stuff going on, super distracting, Music, headphones in, could actually be a really effective way to help you get focused. Now the second reason where music, or example where music can be highly effective, is for maths. A lot of students have shared that when they were doing maths, they found listening to high beat per minute music would be very effective to help them get into a rhythm for their study. And it's no different if you're going for a run. You know, you'll probably listen to music that's got like a high beat per minute really, really, really fast, and that helps you sort of get into a good rhythm and go fast. So similar idea, high beat per minute, and that's typically for mathematics because you can get into a really great rhythm with it. So that's the case for music. But there is also equally a case why you shouldn't listen to music in certain conditions where you should avoid it. So let's find out. So the case against music is really quite simple. At the end of the day, music increases your cognitive load. And your cognitive load is what you're trying to process at any given point in time. So music is an extra thing in addition to the work that you're doing in front of you. Now, this particularly has problems for humanities-based subjects, so where you need to read and then write. Generally speaking, students have found that music got in the way of them being able to do that effectively because of cognitive load. So the rule of thumb here is, unless you're using music to block out a really distraction-filled environment, you should avoid music when it comes to humanities-based subjects. Now, the other thing to think about here is that every time you change the track, or you start singing along to the song because it's really catchy, you've lost focus and concentration. It's gonna take you over 23 minutes to bring that concentration back. So, music can be really distracting because you're always changing tracks. So if you are going to listen to music, you need to really be using a playlist that you don't have to touch, or you get a song on loop, right? You listen to the same song on loop for a period of time. So there you have it. Overall, there's some good reasons why you might listen to music, to blur out distractions, to get in a rhythm for, for maths. But there are also some very compelling reasons why you should not, right? So to minimize your cognitive load, to minimize distraction, and to avoid it for the humanities. I'd love to find out, what are you gonna do? Are you a music or no music person? What have you found has worked for you? Leave it in the comments below, and of course, if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. We do videos every single week, so I will see you next week. <laughs>